My name is Vesak Koivist. I work in Fortum in, in our ESD division uh, as a business development manager. And I want to thank Fuzzy and the team for the opportunity to present today a glimpse of what we're doing in Fortum on the area of smart grids and on the sustain sustainability in, in uh, let's say, concrete applications. Uh, my aim today is to firstly give you a very, very short background of Porto, just for those who uh, are not familiar with the company, uh, and then go into uh, presenting a case, a concrete project, a, a case where uh, we are combining a number of smart grid technologies in one single uh, project. I will also give you a very short glimpse on, let's say, a little bit the broader scale uh, activities or project that we are involved in. Fortum, as, as uh, many of you know, we're uh, uh, originally a Finnish company, now I'm growing to be firstly a Nordic basis, now operating on, uh, as you see, on the, let's say, northeast part of the uh, Europe and uh, Asia, so uh, having operations, we're leading in many fields in Nordic areas, uh, growing towards Baltic countries, Poland, and uh, most recent uh, uh, larger acquisitions have taken place in Russia where we have now gained a, a good foothold in the legalizing market there as well. Uh, we run the full uh, value chain from uh, generation uh, through to uh, medium low voltage, uh, local distribution uh, to retail sales uh, on heat uh, uh, sales, heat, uh, heat generation uh, as well. The company is structured in four divisions uh, where we have uh, the power division, which is responsible for operating our, all of our uh, power generation assets uh, on all of our market areas. Uh, uh, basically, the, uh, the uh, uh, power generation works against the uh, uh, wholesale markets, so you can say that they sell all of the generation to wholesale markets. In, in Nordics, that means uh, everything that uh, power generation produces is sold to Nordpool uh, in that market. Then we have a separate heat division, which runs our uh, combined heat and power uh, uh, plants. Uh, we're operating both uh, industrial heat plants as well as district heating plants. As you know, you take a look out of the window so you can realize that heat is a quite essential part of energy in this region of the world. And, and uh, we are sort of, I believe we are now number four in the, in the global scale in heat, uh, heat generation. The third division uh, focuses on electricity solutions and distribution, and this is my home division, this is where I come from. And uh, in, in this division we run both the uh, distribution operations, uh, the local uh, monopoly operation of uh, uh, delivering the electricity from the power plants to the end consumer site, as well as then uh, uh, running the uh, uh, retail sales of electricity to all kinds of end customers, starting from uh, residential uh, uh, private customers uh, all the way to large enterprises and uh, industrial B2B customers. Uh, perhaps different from many parts of the world, uh, in Nordic countries we have a two-rate system, so all of the customers always get two uh, invoices, private customers. There's gonna be one invoice or one line item on distribution cost, which is then uh, the monopoly side, and then we have the uh, retail cost, the energy cost itself. And uh, in this market, you can basically buy the retail electricity from whoever you want. It's, uh, the market was liberalized in mid 90s uh, through to 2000, early 2000, and today you can buy electricity from different countries, and you can uh, buy it from different uh, players as well. There's a number of uh, oil companies selling electricity contracts. There is even book companies selling electricity contracts. So this kind of uh, is opening up, and it is, uh, the electricity contracts are being sold uh, from many different angles. The market is undergoing a quite radical change right now in terms of the smart metering uh, uh, deployments, and this is now opening up a lot of new opportunities for a number of different players to develop and in introduce new types of services. The fourth division is now focusing on Russia and our 
recent acquisitions in Russia uh, building that and uh, 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 towards uh, uh, more efficient operation. In Russia, we are now currently only operating on the uh, generation side, so we don't have distribution nor retail operations in Russia. That market is still, uh, still regulates it, so it's not liberalized. Having said that, uh, the uh, a liber a market liberalization process in Russia, what has taken place over the past <coughs> years, has been very, very consistent, very, very determined, and uh, what we have seen is that they have actually, they've, they've kept all of their deadlines, what they have communicated out to the world, uh, and been very sort of consistent in doing that. And uh, it's part of their message that the a retail market will also be liberalized uh, in due course of time, so we'll then have to see what happens at, with that. <coughs> Today, uh, I believe it starts to be more close to 100% of the uh, uh, B2B market, which is liberalized in, in Russia, but B2C is still regulated. Sustainability has always been a very important uh, strategy and core objective of Portum. And uh, this graph now shows the uh, CO2 emissions from generation plants generated in Europe. Uh, stated that the European average uh, on CO2 emissions uh, in 2009 was 350 grams per kilowatt hour. Uh, that's the European average. Uh, we scored 41 uh, on that year, uh, on that scale. Uh, uh, so we're Second to Stockcraft, who uh, is more or less only operating uh, uh, hydro in Norway. Uh, so we're very proud of that result, uh, and that's a result of a quite uh, uh, determined uh, portfolio management where we've been uh, focusing to, to get the uh, as low CO2 emitting generation as possible. For reference, you can say, uh, we take uh, U.S. Uh, um, my rec if my recollection doesn't fail me, it's, uh, the U.S. average is somewhere between uh, 650 to 700 uh, grams per kilowatt hour. Take Japan. Japan is uh, 430 grams per kilowatt hour. So if you say that, that we're looking at the industrialized world, Europe is not doing all that uh, bad. It's uh, in average, maybe even a little bit better, but in that European scale. Uh, we can see Portumas uh, uh, pretty much in the leading, leading position in that area. Now we're taking next steps in sustainability, uh, in, in, in accordance to the sustainability strategy to provide our end consumers also possibilities to have concrete uh, possibilities to impact on their uh, CO2 emissions uh, and impact their energy consumption behavior. And uh, as a one concrete uh, project around this, uh, Fortum is participating in a, a larger consortia of, uh, in, uh, in Finland now uh, under a SCEM, uh, Smart Green Energy, Energy Markets uh, program. There is a, a number of different projects ongoing, and one of these projects is to build a demo building, if you like. Uh, uh, where we uh, aim to test uh, different technologies and bring them to the say, customer interface uh, uh, for getting feedback. So uh, together with uh, uh, consortia partners such as uh, ADB, Bambara University of Technology, uh, we're uh, having other partners uh, uh, in, in, as a construction company, Skanska, and uh, as Beizen uh, uh, for the measurement part, uh, we are cooperating on building a, a new uh, multi-story building. It's going to be eight, floor, uh, eight, eight stories high, 42 apartments. Uh, uh, the construction is about to start right now, as we speak, uh, in uh, not too far away from here in uh, Magdala Espo. Uh, the estimated uh, construction time is one year, so we're expecting the new tenants uh, to be able to move in uh, pretty much a year from now. Home for the Christmas. I think that is the that is the target uh, uh, to have. Uh, one very important uh, driver for all the participants uh, in this project is really 
to collect feedback from the end consumers. This is uh, what we aim to get out of this. Uh, when we're introducing new technologies, uh, we, we want to get feedback that what works, what doesn't work, uh, uh, what is missing, uh, so that we can, uh, we all uh, can uh, uh, steer our development to more customer-oriented solutions and uh, services uh, towards the future. This is uh, really a, uh, uh, I would see, as an ecosystem uh, type of a development in a, in a tight cooperation between different partners to create something, uh, something new, a, a new combination of things. So what does it include then? This is uh, my main topic for today. We will, we will uh, uh, as for one, we will introduce uh, electric vehicles uh, uh, through this project. So, uh, what we will do is that we will actually provide one electric vehicle free of charge for one year for this uh, uh, tenants in this building. So we will create a reservation system whereby whoever living in the building can make a booking for the EV and you know take it for a spin and uh, see how it how it performs. Uh, with this, we want to uh, lower the threshold for the uh, people to have access to an EV and to get a feel whether that would be something that could be something for them into the future. I mean, uh, buying a car in Finland is a pretty expensive thing, so you need to be sure whether that is uh, really meeting your needs. Uh, and uh, this is, we can see this as a way to introduce that to people uh, in an easy way uh, for them to get their own flavor of it uh, and see whether that will perform for their own uh, individual needs. We've obviously done a lot of research behind this and we know that uh, in most cases, I think it's like 80% of the time, people who are driving less than uh, 50 kilometers a, a day. Uh, so an EV with the range for uh, today, with the current ranges are in around uh, 150 to 200 kilometers with one charge. It's trying to be quite, quite uh, competitive. With the EV, obviously, uh, uh, for us from a technology perspective, what we want to test is uh, different uh, charging solutions. Uh, so in the building, in the garage of the building, uh, Skanska will actually build uh, uh, more than just one uh, charging unit uh, so that if and when, hopefully, somebody will buy an EV, there will be ready-made infrastructure uh, in the garage so that they can uh, utilize it. So for us, it's going to be testing that how the charging infrastructure work and how can we monitor it and how can we yeah, possibly steer it. Obviously, looking at the uh, fundamental uh, part of it and uh, combining it to the sustainability, we can see that this is one way of helping city environment becoming more sustainable, reducing the CO2 emissions uh, uh, in, in transport. 